that your own wonderful human imagination is God, you cannot fail in achieving your objective. All things are possible to him who believes. With God, all things are possible. Now, he equates man with, with men who do not know the Lord's name. Those who know thy name put their trust in thee. For thou, O Lord, would not... Now let us look for his name as revealed in Scripture. And Moses said to God, If I go to the Israelites, and I say to them that the God of your forefathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say? And God said to Moses, say, I am. That is who I am. Just say, I am, has sent you. For that is my name forever. And by this name, I shall be known throughout all generations. I have no other name. Just be aware. To be aware is to say, I am. Without uttering one sound, just to be aware. That is I am. That is God. Now that's what I mean by imagination. Now what is faith? We are told in the 11th chapter of Hebrews that faith is the assurance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. By faith we understand that the world was created by the Word of God. That things which are seen were made out of things which do not appear. And the unseen becomes seen. Now, having found who God is, my own wonderful human imagination, then how would I go about actually creating something that at the moment seems either difficult or even impossible? I start first of all naturally with God, because God is my own wonderful human imagination. So the most blessed gift in the world is a strong, vivid imagination, a clear idea and a determinate vision of things as I would like them to be, all within my own mind. Conjure a scene which would imply the fulfillment of my dream. See it clearly in my mind's eye. Give it all the tones of reality. Give it as much sensory vividness as I can. And believe in that imaginal act. Have it so fixed in my mind that I am completely oblivious to all the things round about me that would deny it. And walk in the assumption that it is so. Assume that feeling of the wish fulfilled and simply ignore everything that denies it. And walk in it. And I'm calling a thing that is not now seen as though it were seen. And that unseen state will become seen. I tell you, I know this from my own experience. It never fails, but we are the operant power. Knowing what to do is one thing, and doing it is another. So will I do it? To know it all well and good, but will I do it? Those who know thy name put their trust in thee. In any other God, it's a false God. To turn to any other God, you're turning to a false God. He is housed within you, as you're told in Scripture. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? And I am telling you that if you dare to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled, knowing who is doing it, it's God doing it. For God is your own wonderful human imagination. And he is doing it. So if you dare to assume it and you walk in the assumption that it is so, 
ignoring the senses, ignoring the facts of life that deny it. In a way you do not know, it will become a reality in your world. Take a man who is drafted. I was drafted in 1942 at the age of 38. Not quite 38, but going on 38. Like millions of us, I dare say they all felt as I did, but they didn't know this principle. I knew I didn't want any part of it. Nevertheless, I was drafted. I didn't resist it. They sent me off to Camp Hope, Louisiana. And after three months in boot training, I decided I would do something about it by applying this principle. I asked, first of all, for an honorable discharge because there was a regulation that came down from Washington. But if a man was over 38, before March the 1st of 1943, he was eligible. He didn't say it was automatic. If his commanding officer felt that he needed him in his company, that decision was final with the commanding officer. You could not appeal it to any higher position. You couldn't take it to the general. So whatever your commanding officer was, and he was a colonel, if he decided he needed you in his battalion, you remain. Well, I applied based upon the fact that I was eligible, or I was 38 before March the 1st of 1943. And it came back to me disapproved and signed by my commanding officer. All right, that seems final, but there is nothing final in this world if you know who God is. If you know that your own wonderful human imagination is God, you do not accept anything on the outside that is in conflict with your wonderful desire. So I desired to be honorably discharged out of the army and doing the work I'm doing now, for I did it before. I want to return to that work. So that night, here was the paper that I received that day, disapproved and signed Colonel Theodore Bilbo Jr. His father was Senator Bilbo of Mississippi. As I retired in my barracks with all these men around me, I assumed I was in my own apartment in New York City. I knew it well. I left a wife and a little girl only a few months old when I was drafted. My son volunteered and he was with the Marines in Guadalcanal. And they picked me up and I was drafted and my little girl was born the end of June of that year. So she was only a few months and I had a wife and a little girl. And so I imagine I am home. My wife is in that bed, I'm in this bed. And my little girl is over there in the crib. And then I simply assume I am walking through the apartment. It was a nice seven-room apartment. And I walked from room to room and touched the objects, and they all seemed so familiar. And I looked through the window and I saw Washington Square. And I looked to my right and I saw Sixth Avenue. And then, having gone all through the place, I simply returned to my bed and settled in it all in my imagination. But I gave it the tones of reality. I gave it sensory vividness. I made it so real that it seemed to me I'm actually in my apartment in New York City. But I made quite sure I was not there on furlough. I was there because I was honorably discharged. No furlough, not going back. Well, four o'clock in the morning, before my eyes came a sheet of paper. It looked like the sheet that I got from the colonel where it was disapproved. And as I looked at it, a hand came out from here to the pen and it held a pen. And it scratched out the word disapproved and it wrote boldly in script, approved. And then the voice said to me, that which I have done, 
I have done. Do nothing. I woke, and all the boys had sung to sleep. I remained until I couldn't break their sleep. I remained until that very moment when I could go down and shave and clean before anyone else did, which I did. And this thing is permeating my entire brain, what happened to me that night. For nine days, I did nothing. On the ninth day, the same colonel called me in. And after a long chat with me, he said, go back to your commanding officer, captain, and tell him to sign another application. And so I went back. I had done nothing in the interval. And he signed another application. I went back to the colonel. The colonel approved it. And that very day, I was on a train from Camp Polk, Louisiana, to New York City, honorably discharged. To this day, none of them knew or know what I did. I did it all in my imagination. I believed that what I did was fact. I believed that my imaginal act creates facts, and therefore I actually lived in my apartment and I was not any longer a soldier, I was a civilian, but I was honorably discharged from the army, not dishonorably. And in nine days, it was fulfilled. I can multiply that story by hundreds, if one will actually do it, for we are the operant power. Instead of doing strange things and getting in wrong with the government and fighting for your objectives, you don't fight at all. The voice said to me, that which I have done, I have done, do nothing. Well, where was that voice? Within me. That very voice that I heard coming from without was whispering from within me. The voice that said to Moses, I am, that is who I am. And he heard us coming from without what is being whispered from within. For are we not told in Scripture that we are the temple of the living God and the Spirit of God dwells in us? And God is Spirit. Well, if the Spirit of God dwells in us, then how could I hear it from another? He is coming from within myself. And so I heard it. When I could not get any passage, I did the same thing when I seemingly was locked in an island for months to come because there was no train, no ships coming. I did the same thing. I remember what I did in the army to get out. I did it when I was in an island and could not get out. And there are long, long lists waiting and they called me and gave me passage for my wife and my little girl and myself. And yet there were thousands waiting all through the Indies to get out and only two little ships servicing the entire group of islands. And I simply got out. It doesn't matter how, I did it normally. I didn't kill anyone, I didn't bribe anyone, I didn't pull any strings, I simply applied this principle. If I actually got past it, would I sail? Yes. Well, then I assume that I am on a ship and looking back nostalgically at the little island, leaving behind me my friends and my relatives and taking with me my wife and my daughter and I looked back and it seemed so normal and so natural I gave it tones of reality I could feel the salt of the sea on the rail as I held the rail of the ship I could smell the rawness of the ocean and I could see the island and then within a matter of 24 hours after I did it I got a call from the Alcor Steamship Company to come on down and see them. I went down and they said, we have a passage for you. There are only two beds, but the little girl can sleep with her mother and you can sleep up. And so there were two bunks. And it's a lovely ship, small, only carrying 60 odd passengers. But I sailed and came back on time as I was committed to go to, to uh, Milwaukee the 1st of May, and I got there, got there in time. So I asked everyone to believe in God. But God is not something on the outside of you. God is your own wonderful human imagination. 
If you have any other God, you have a false God. Therefore, do not feed him anything but loving thoughts. Nothing but loving thoughts. Always exercise your imagination lovingly on behalf of everyone in this world. It doesn't cost you anything, and it doesn't hurt anyone. And you will find yourself becoming the man that you want to be, the lady that you want to be. And you'll move from stage to stage to stage without hurting anyone and fulfilling all of your dreams. Then you'll know how true the statement is. That all things are possible to him who believes. Because with God, all things are possible. And you'll fund God. You'll fund him in yourself as your own wonderful human imagination.